I'm Lance Wilhelm, and here's what we're going to make today. Okay, first things first, I want to give a shout out to Thomas for his instructable. I followed this instructable almost to the T to make my board. Uh, I took some liberties in some places with supplies that I already had and with design considerations that I wanted to factor in on the long in the long run. Um, but for the most part, I followed this and this is what you guys should follow as well when making your board. All right, let's get into it. First things we're going to need are a Sharpie to mark the ping pong balls and this special marker device that I made in Fusion 360 and I will put a link to in the description 3D print. You will also need lots of ping pong balls. Today we're going to be using Kevin's balls. The first thing you need to do is take note of whether or not your balls have a seam in them. Mine do. Uh, so I'll need to pay attention to that later when we're marking them, as well as the logo placement. Balls where the seam is visible and up and down, and also take a look at the where, where the label is. And then we're going to place that marking tool to where it is parallel with the seam. We want to make sure that the seam is not visible from the front later once we cut these, and they are lit up, because that is the most visible thing next to that label. And it looks, it's a big eyesore. Then, when it's in the marking device, just take your Sharpie and mark around the ring. The marking device has two different sizes, so feel free to use whatever size you think will work best for you. And if you can't print this marking device, you can either make one with a piece of wood or a piece of cardboard or some other sort of rigid thing that you cut a hole into. The two sizes on the ring are 32 and 34 millimeters. I opted to use the 34 millimeters for this project as my ping pong balls were 40 millimeters in diameter. Okay, now that we're done marking all of our balls, we're gonna get into actually cutting out that little backside of them. I used a nice sharp X-Acto knife. You can find any method that will work best for you, but this seemed to work best for me. Grab yourself a mat to protect whatever surface that you're working on. Then put your point right on the line and push into the ping pong ball. It should go in pretty easy as long as you have a nice exacto knife blade and then just work your way around the line that you had marked on the ball it shouldn't be too hard to do your fingers will um, feel the strain a little bit of holding the ball it is a little tough but not too bad as you're near the end just make sure you just keep slicing straight on the line because the ball will want to deform a little bit as you're going through If you have any little nicks or imperfect cuts, don't worry about it. Really, you just need to make sure that it's generally a circular opening and that, it, that that seam, as you can see, is pretty flat. Now that we have finished cutting all the balls, let's get the LED set up. You'll need a soldering iron, solder, a pair of diagonal cutters or wire cutters, some scissors. I used an Arduino for testing, and then a bunch of LEDs, the LED strips that you're using. Okay, with your LEDs, now we need to count out how many LEDs we need. So for me, because I have 60 LEDs per meter, I count out by twos and then get to my LEDs. If you're using 30 LEDs per meter, then you just need to count out one per one. Once you reach your spot, cut right along the line. Make sure you cut directly on that line. It'll make for everything lining up in the future a little bit easier. Then pre-tin those copper pads that are on the LEDs, making sure not to overheat your LEDs as you do so. Uh, if you need help with soldering, go ahead and give a quick Google. There are tons of videos out there that'll help with soldering. 
All right, now that we've gotten our pads soldered up, let's wire them, the different strands together. Keep in mind the arrows pointing will need to be oriented in the same direction for each strip. I'm using four and a half inches of wire between the strips to connect them. This is pretty generous, I found in hindsight, um, so you don't need as much, but it gave me plenty of room to work with. Once you measure out your wires, go ahead and snip them. Then pre tin the wires after you've stripped them. And go ahead, and I apologize for the bad video quality, uh, go ahead and solder those wires up onto the strand. And then here, you can test it as you go along. Again, because I'm using 60 LEDs per meter, my code only lights up every other one, which would be what somebody with 30 LEDs per meter would see on, on theirs. After you have finished wiring up all of your LEDs, it's time to get the board actually made with all your ping pong balls. For this, we use the frame boards that were pine boards. I believe they're one inch by three inch boards to help align the balls together. So line up your first row. All you need is a little dab of hot glue between each ball and you can clean up those strands later. Okay, once you've gotten one, go ahead and move on to the next one and then you can line them up as you get done and go ahead and hot glue them together. I apologize for the bad video. I didn't set my camera well. Once you're done, it should look something like this. And we're on to making the frame. Now this is honestly was one of the hardest parts of this whole thing because there's no cut and dry set size. Everybody might be, everybody's board might be different. So you have to do some guest test and revising. And so I laid it out, got some dimensions and then proceeded to try and do some trigonometry to figure out the angles. Oh, and also make sure that your pets don't get any of spare wires. So after doing some trig to find some angles, at least that I thought would work, it's on down to try and cut the frame. For this, I used a table saw that I was able to move the angle of the blade to the side. And in the end, I ultimately found that the best, uh, the best angle for me was 60 degrees, so I set it to 30 degrees and proceeded from there. The sizing though was very tricky and I had to go back and cut it multiple times. Pro tip after doing this multiple times now is to leave yourself excess and then just trim away little bits on little bits after you found that it might be a little too big. And again, it's just guest test and revising as you're putting it together, matching up the angles, making sure that it's all lining up correctly. Also here, another thing, is to put your board, put your balls onto a something really flat, like an actual flat linoleum floor or tile floor, and, uh, and not carpet. I kind of messed up there. It was a lot harder to do it on carpet because some of the carpet fibers would actually get caught between the boards. But still, you can get a notional sense as to how close it is. I thought I had it at that point. Turns out I didn't in the long run. I had to remake this whole frame. Now, once you've got all your boards cut, you need to attach them. I used pocket holes and a Craig pocket hole jig to make them. Once you get it all together, then it's on to test it. Again, this was my second attempt at making this, so if you happen to remake it, then that's how it goes, but that's all right, so worth it in the end. The ball should sit in there snug or just a little bit loose. They should still be very close to the edge of the board as we're gonna glue them to the actual frame later. Then I used a piece of hardboard, I believe quarter inch hardboard or eighth inch hardboard that I just got from my local home improvement store and I cut the edges and again, it was guest test and revise. 
Now you can test your LED placements from here to make sure that everything is good. And I highly recommend you do this. What I did, because I know that the balls are 40 millimeters in diameter, is I measured 40 millimeters or four centimeters from the last strand to put it directly in the center of the next balls. And then I just used some cellophane tape, used some scotch tape to put the strands down and secure them in place while I tested them. From there, I just plugged in my Arduino test board again, lit them up, make sure they all still worked as I put them down, and then laid the balls on top to make sure that they are all aligned properly. If one strand isn't aligned properly, you can easily go in and move it at this point before you permanently secure it later. When you're readjusting your board or your ping pong balls, make sure you lift the balls and not drag them across the LEDs as they might grab them and damage it. Then once you have finished your placement and you're confident that it looks good, Go ahead and take a pencil and mark the edges of the LED strips so that you can see it later. This will also give you a reference for drilling holes, which you'll need to do to pull the LED strips through. I drilled the holes one centimeter from the edge of the board, as the first LED was typically two centimeters from the, LED, from the edge of the board. I also used a half inch drill bit to drill these holes. Once you're done, it should look a little something like this. And I've gone ahead and wired up my Raspberry Pi that I will, that I will ultimately use. And now for a final test. Once it looks good and you're satisfied, we can go ahead and move to putting the actual ping pong balls in the frame and gluing them in place and then sliding in that backboard. Once the backboard is in place, we tape the wires back to make sure that they aren't visible from any of the other sides. Make sure when you're doing this not to pull off any pads on the LEDs. And here's what it looks like all wired up in the back. I made the firmware for my ping pong ball clock in Python, and it is available at this repository right here on GitHub. I will throw a link to that in the description below. Uh, and it has some documentation here on how to set it up. It does help to have some prior knowledge using Git or Linux or Python on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so you might have to tinker with it a little bit if you have no prior experience, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out either from my instructions here or Googling some, some help on the internet. Now let's get into a bit of a walkthrough here. If we start at the top of the page, uh, we can click on this settings icon up here and see that it has a fully customizable background color for the page. And as you set it, it will change the background color. It also saves this for future use. When you reload the page, it should still be that color. You can also change the title of the web page as well, and it will reflect that. So then if we reload the web page, it'll pop up. Then moving down, we get into the first section, the background style picker. This is all to do with the background behind the text balls in their colors. So we have some set default colors here, which are just basic ones. Um, I just happened to pick these from the start and uh, I might change them in the future uh, based on feedback. But right now we just have green, red, blue and black which is actually just turning off of the leds and since we have no text color up right now uh, it just blacks out the screen we also have some animations these are hopefully i'll be making more of these in the future but for now we have rainbow which just cycles through the rainbow rainbow cycle breathing which is through a set specific uh, colors that I have pre-programmed uh, and could be modified in the future. And then Twinkle, which was something I wanted to work on that kind of made like a night sky. It works okay. Um, it could use some improvement. Kind of wanted to make twinkling stars. Or you can set any sort of custom background color you want. set that and then down here we have a text style picker or the text uh, colors mostly is what we can do here we have the two primary colors up here of white and black 
and then you can set custom colors if you want down here on the slider just like your background and then what's really fun to do is add some text animations here the color animations i'm a big fan of the black background with the rainbow text color or rainbow cycle and breathing as well pretty neat and then we also have the ability to choose between two different fonts. So I have programmed in a digits font, which will only be applied to digits on the screen and a slanted font, which put the slanted font is default for the text, but it's not default for any numbers that are displayed on screen. So if we have slanted, we get that nice slanted font and then we go back to digits, nice and easy to choose between the two. Okay, once we get down here for everyone, that is using this board and making the standard configuration off of the instructable you'll want to just have the normal board for those who are not using a normal board like I have been working on an extra large version I have that here this is merely for my usage at this point and if you want some documentation on that just let me know but it's kind of in beta testing at this time but for a normal board, we have the ability to configure the content for one line of text at this time. So right now, let's see, we have the time displayed. We can configure that time to be either 12 or 24 hours time, which since it's 10 in the morning, it won't change between the two, but I promise it will change once it gets past 12. We can also put the date in here and the thing is is that we cannot see these outside of that because we have not we aren't scrolling through our text yet so if we come down here I found a sweet spot on scrolling text to be oops seven and a half and we can see that the date is now scrolling across the screen and we can add more things this will likely come up with an error because I have not set my API key for the weather. Check the GitHub repository for details on how to set your API keys for weather. As we can see, it's error. Otherwise, it will display temperature and the current conditions of the weather, like cloudy, partly cloudy, snowy, those sorts of things. And in here, you can configure your temperature unit. Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. You can set either by zip code, which will default to US, this is US zip code, or your city name, so any large city names that you want to, you can put that in there. And then lastly, you could do a custom text field as well, and I'm going to remove these other ones and just keep time and custom text. Uh, oh, the typical programmer thing. And set that custom text, and we should see this pop up as we scroll through. And look, there we go. Perfect. Right now I only have an exclamation point and a question mark for symbols in the text. I'll be adding support for other symbols in the future. And then we already kind of glimpsed at this at the bottom, but we can set that right to left scrolling speed here if we want to do one. And this is in balls per second. We want to do just one ball per second we can do that and i found the effective maximum is probably around seven and a half to ten balls per second right now before it starts visibly slowing down or speeding up when text is on and off the screen but i personally like seven and a half and then what you can do is hit reset that sets that back to zero and it also puts whatever that first text item which the time fits perfectly on the screen right back to the beginning this is in beta right now manage board configs but i'm working on where you can save custom setups and have it right here and then go back to those in the future if you have things that you want to use for specific times. And then lastly, we have set display brightness. I have it set right now, I believe for day. This would be night and night night is really low. That's for in a bedroom setting and you don't want any light showing and reflecting but for day and then you can crank it up. But keep in mind as you go higher, your LEDs and your wiring setup and your power supply might not be able to support that and you might see some effects from that. I found that actually just setting the display brightness to 50 is pretty good even for a day setting. Another thing that I should mention is that as you change settings in here, it should save them into a configuration file so that when you reload the file or let's come over here Let's stop the actual clock from running. And then if we restart the code, 
it should pop up with whatever our last configuration was. There we go. And that's about it. I'll be adding more support and more things to this as I go along. So keep checking in with that repository on GitHub and uh, you'll be able to see that on the final stable uh, codes on the master branch right there.